Welcome to the Children's Church. Before Mrs. Weimer teaches us about Jacob, let's watch this video to get us caught up on what we have learned about Abraham and Isaac and what we will learn about Jacob. We're skipping right to the Bible. We're skipping where? To the Bible. We're skipping sure. To the Bible. We're skipping, 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 skipping. Old Testament. <sighs> Does anyone have any roll aids? And here we are, one year later. What? No way. Well, would you look at that? It actually happened. Of course it did. God promised it would. Oh, sure. Like you didn't have any doubts? Well, one thing's for sure. This kid is going to grow up to be some special. Oh, I bet he'll be like a king or something. Maybe even a professional golfer. Oh! <gasps> Wait. What if he's the redeemer that God made that promise about? I wouldn't be so sure about that. Of course he will. He's the one with the promise. Why don't you just go ahead and keep reading? When Isaac grew older, God told Abraham to take his only son Isaac to a mountain and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering? What? Looks like things are really starting to heat up. <laughs> okay, that's not funny at all. Why would you even say that? You're right, that was totally uncalled for. I would talk why to did mom, I do I'm, it? I'm speechless. I don't know why I would joke about something like that. Okay, but it's not like he, Abraham's actually going to do it. I mean, it's his son for Pete's sake. Well, let's find out. Okay. So Abraham took his son Isaac to the place God had told him. He built an altar and he placed his son Isaac on top of it. Then Abraham reached out oh, Abraham. and took out his knife. Oh, okay, look. And an angel of the Lord called out to Abraham and told him not to touch Isaac. It was a test skip. God was just testing Abraham to see if he would obey him. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Ooh, shake it out. I just thought, I thought, oh, I don't want to think what I was thinking. It was horrible. That Abraham sure trusted God. And it looks like Isaac went on to live a good long life. He got married to a girl named Rebecca, and they had twin boys. Jacob and Esau. Oh, they're so cute. That one's a little hairy, though. That's Esau, the firstborn. When Jacob came out, he was grabbing Esau's heel. Talk about following in your brother's footsteps. Esau grew to be a mighty hunter, but Jacob liked to stay at home. Isaac liked Esau better, but Rebecca liked Jacob better. Oh, hey, that's like us. Except I think both mom and dad like me a little bit better. Ha <laughs> right? In your dreams, spazzoid. Looks like Jacob was a tricky little fella. One day, Esau was so hungry that he started begging Jacob for something to eat. And Jacob said he'd only feed him if Esau sold him his birthright. So Esau did it! He sold his whole inheritance! Wow! That's crazy! Oh, and ch check this out! He tricked Esau again just a little while later. When Isaac was old, he told his favorite son Esau to go and make him a delicious meal so he could bless him before he died. Only problem was Rebecca was listening, and she came up with a plan. It seems like Isaac didn't see so well, so Rebecca dressed Jacob up as Esau and had him pretend to be his brother. Jacob brought Isaac his meal, and since Isaac thought he was Esau, he blessed Jacob instead. No way! So... Now, the promise that went from Abraham to Isaac is now going to Jacob. I bet the old furball Esau was none too happy about that. Yeah, Esau was so mad that he was planning to kill Jacob for what he did. So Jacob packed up his things and he ran away from home. Good plan. But how was God going to use a guy like Jacob? I mean, he stole from his brother. Well, I guess God's okay with using people who aren't perfect. I guess that just shows how powerful he really is. If he can use a guy like Jacob to get his work done, then well, he can use anybody. Oh, come on, Jacob's walking away. Let's go see where he's going. Wait, Skip, what about that delicious meal Jacob made? I mean, couldn't we just stick around a little while longer and I've only had a Pop-Tart all day?
Wow! Aren't you glad those two are not our regular Bible teachers? Mrs. Swan must really be having a hard time finding relevant video material. Here's his wine. Good morning, everybody. All right, so today we're going to talk about another hero from the Bible, another one of those faith heroes. Remember, we talked about how there's this chapter in the Bible called the faith chapter, and it's all about these people who trusted God so much through their whole lives, and God always came through for them. Last week, we talked about Isaac. Well, today we're going to talk about one of Isaac's sons. We're actually going to talk about two of his sons. So Isaac married a woman named Rebecca. And after they'd been married for a while, Rebecca became pregnant. And she found out that she was going to have twins. I bet she was pretty excited about that. Well, when time came for her to have these babies, the first baby that came out was really hairy. So they named him Esau. The second baby that came out, his name, or he, he was, had smooth skin, um, and his name was Jacob. Well, Jacob and Esau grew up together. And they were probably pretty good friends with each other, but they probably also fought a lot because I know that brothers do that. And the Bible tells us that even when they were in their mom's tummy before they were born, that they were kind of fighting with each other. Well, one day when they were older, Esau, who was a hunter, and he liked to be out in nature, and he liked to go hunting and, and be outside. And Jacob, who liked to kind of be at home with his mom, uh, Jacob was making this stew. And Esau had just come in from hunting. And he was so hungry. He smelled that stew. Did you ever come in from playing outside and you smell mom cooking dinner? And it smells so good and you're like, oh, I'm going to die if I don't get anything to eat. Well, that's how Jacob, that, excuse me, Esau was feeling. He was so hungry and that food smelled so good. He said, oh, Jacob, please give me some of that food. And Jacob said, I'll only give you this food if you promise to give me your birthright. Now, a birthright is, means that the firstborn son of the family basically gets everything. When the parents are gone, they get all of dad's wealth. They get all of dad's positions, all of his servants, all of his land. They get everything. So Esau was supposed to get that because he was the first one born. And Jacob wouldn't have gotten much of anything. But Jacob said, Esau, I will only give you some of this stew if you promise that I can have your birthright. Well, Esau said, oh, what good is a birthright if I die from starvation? Now, he was being kind of silly because he wasn't going to die of starvation, but he was also being foolish because he agreed to it. So he told Jacob, yeah, you can have the birthright. He didn't think it was a big deal at the time. Well, several years later, when their father Isaac was getting very old and he was getting ready to die, he called Esau into his bedroom and he said, Esau, I would like you to go hunting and I would like you to fix me my favorite meal from the game that you get. And when you bring it into me, I'm going to give you your birthright and I'm going to give you a special blessing. Now, back in the Old Testament, when a father blessed his children or his child, that means he would speak wonderful things about them and then God would honor that and that would happen for them. So Esau was pretty excited about this. So he went out hunting. Well, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, was listening. And here's the thing you need to know about Isaac and Rebecca. Esau was Isaac's favorite son. Jacob was Rebecca's favorite son. It's not a good idea for parents to have favorites, but even parents make mistakes. So Rebecca heard this, and she was like, oh, no, I want my favorite son, Jacob, to get this blessing. So she said, Jacob. Go down and get me a goat. She actually said, get two goats. And I'm going to prepare one of them as a meal for your father. He won't know that it's not wild game that Esau hunted. And then I want you to take it to your father and pretend that you're Esau so that he will give you the blessing. Jacob said, well, he's going to know it's not me because Esau's skin is very hairy. She said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of that. So Jacob did as he was told. He went and he got a, two goats. They fixed the meal, and then Rebecca put some of the goat skin on Jacob's neck and on his arms. She took one of Esau's shirts and put it on Jacob because it smelled like Esau. And then she said, okay, here's the meal. Take it into your father. Well, he took it in there, and Isaac said, who is that? And Jacob said, it's me, your firstborn Esau. He was lying. That was not a good choice to make, but he did it. 
And Isaac said, are you really my son Jacob? Because you sound, or excuse me, are you really my son Esau? Because you sound like Jacob. And he said, no, it's me Esau. And when he went near the bed, his father felt his arm. Well, he didn't feel the smooth skin that was underneath. He felt that goat hair and it felt like Esau's arm. And then he sniffed really deeply and he smelled his shirt and it smelled like Esau. He said, well, this must be my son Esau. So he gave him a wonderful blessing and he gave him the birthright. Well, about that time, they heard Esau coming home. So Jacob got out of there really quickly and Esau was so excited, he knew nothing about this. He fixed the meal for his father and he brought it in and his father said, who is that? And he said, it's me, your firstborn Esau. Well, Isaac knew that he'd been tricked. And he was very, very sad that he didn't have a blessing to give to Esau. Time to get moving. Jump up and follow along with the power shuffle and then the Bible aerobics. beginning. Get ready. Way back in the beginning, there was God, and he made the world, and he made two people, Adam and Eve, and he gave them a choice to obey or to disobey. They chose to disobey. That is called the fall. That's when sin came into the world. But God had an idea. He would send part of himself in the form of a baby. His name was Jesus. He died on the cross was put into the tomb, and on the third day he rose from the dead. He broke the power of sin and death and was seen alive by many people. Then he went up into heaven. But God had another idea. He would send part of himself called the Holy Spirit who could be everywhere and even live in your heart. 
He stamps us with a special invisible seal. That means we're part of God's family until Jesus comes again from heaven and we meet him in the air to be with him forever and ever and ever. Great job, kids. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Make it a great week.